My name is John Murillo, and you're watching Let's Talk About It with Rahim Mitchell. Let's talk about it. Say, I just heard about a show. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Where the independent artists go. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Nisi got a new EP. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Stephanie's doing comedy. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. That girl from oh, oh, LA. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. And now your host of so Let's Talk About It. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Hello. And welcome to Let's Talk About It. I'm your host, Raheem Mitchell. Thank you for tuning in. Tonight, our guest is Mr. Johnny Murillo. He's an investor and a realtor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Johnny Murillo to the show. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Very <laughs> good. Right. Very good. Nice. Yes, thank you. sir. Yes. Uh, right. Thank last, you for having last me. Time, <laughs> last time I seen this guy, he kicked my butt well. in golf. <laughs> So that's, you know. that's, um, it, golf is very uh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> golf is not good for me. I no. told him. This is what I told him. I said, but by the way, everybody, you know, you guys want to know it's my brother-in-law. So I'm like, nah, man, I'm not ready to. I'm not, yeah, no, nah, just come on out. It'll be okay. Kicked my butt. Well, I've been playing golf on and on for about 10, 15 years, so yeah. that's part of my business. <laughs> <laughs> I've gained some clients in the golf course, so that's true. it's uh, uh, one of the benefits. I used to work with Doctors' un Union. I used to run a Doctors' Union yes. in Southern California. And, of course, doctors demand the best food, right. best wine, mm -hmm. and a lot of golf. That's it. Unfortunately, I had to partake in all that. You had to partake in all <laughs> the things that was offered to you. Exactly. Um, but, you know, that's, uh, I'm retired now recently, two mm -hmm. years ago. I got into the real estate business maybe about 10 years ago with my first investment property in okay. Las Vegas. Right. Um, just got my license actually two years ago because I saw that a lot of things were happening in the industry. That right. I said, you know, I might as well get my license and help people get to where I was 28 years ago, now when I first my bought my first property. Right. I was scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> you have to edit that out. We can't say that, but I understand. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, there's a lot of bumps and, and, and bruises that people have to be aware of, and I'm here to maybe speak about some of them. Okay. Well, I know uh, I have a couple of questions that a lot of people were. Um, I told them I was going to be interviewing an uh, investor in Ritter. And they like, well, sure. these few questions for me. Sure. So um, let's say, for one, it was like, uh, take us through the real estate process for a buyer? Well, um, a buyer, first time home buyer is very different than one that has bought before, obviously. Right. A first time home buyer, number one, I think has to get his credit scores in intact. In I mean, he has, in order to qualify for a decent uh, loan, okay. uh, a loan that has good terms in terms of interest rates, et cetera, uh, it all depends on his credit, credit score and financial ability to pay the mortgage. Right. So a lender will, first thing they look at is payment, history, credit scores, and current revenue, or uh, what kind of work they do, et cetera. So the first thing a buyer, a potential buyer needs to do is uh, get pre-qualified. Right. Uh, and the way to get pre-qualified with a lender is to have uh, the, uh, uh, qualified for a certain level that right. he may be interested in, is to have uh, decent credit scores and, and obviously a, a good um, source of income. Okay. Whether it's with him or his partner, uh, they need to qualify for the maximum amount. Given that, then a, a, an agent like myself can go out and look for a, a property based on what this buyer can qualify for. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is hire an agent, obviously. Right. Uh, uh, that uh, an agent will be able to look at the market, explain to the potential buyer that what is, what is possible, mm -hmm. given his qualifications. Right. Um, in today's market, it's, um, it's all over the place in, in terms of where, where you look for a property, where mm -hmm. from the multi-million property to the 200s. Right. But overall, across California, market is very tight. I mean, properties uh, are be staying on the market only for an average of eight days on the market. Really? An average a property that is that is uh, put on the market today, right. on average, will sell within eight days. Wow. Yeah. That's the median 
uh, days on market right. for, for properties in California. Each county uh, in California, each market within those counties may have different days on market uh, right. data, but across the board, it's, uh, it's a very tight market. And so a buyer has to compete with potential investors, people that come in with cash, people right. that come in with money, and that's uh, who can afford to tell a seller, you know what, here's my offer for your house. Right. It's uh, if you ask for 500,000, I'll give you 490,000, but it's cash right here, right now. Right. Uh, a, a potential buyer that has not qualified, perhaps. But he has. But like, he, has, he has money in he hand. Has, he has money. Well, the the the, the buyer uh, the, who, that is financing. Yeah. A, a potential buyer that is financing is different than a buyer that has cash. Right. Right. So th right away you have an advantage. The the cash buyer has the advantage. Right. So. It's, that's why I advise my clients that you get you have to get pre-qualified before I start looking okay. because it does me no good to look for a house that you're interested in and you I have eight for. days to qualify. Right. It doesn't. It just won't happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> By the time he qualifies, that house is gone. <laughs> right. Right. So that's why uh, that's number and that's a, that's why uh, my advice to potential buyers is that they have to uh, get their credit in order, get pre-qualified. Uh, and hopefully have a decent down payment enough to, for whatever target, whatever price point they're interested in buying, 20% right. uh, is typical okay. to, to, as a down payment. But there's a lot of programs out there right now, if you can't afford the 20%, that you can, there's programs that can help you qualify oh, okay. for loans that lenders, if you sign up with this program, for example, uh, they can help. You can go down as far as as low as five percent of the down payment. Really? Yes. Uh, but there's all, all kinds of qualifications and standards that have to be met. Uh, but there's there's ways of doing it. Um, and that's why, you know, uh, for a buyer right now, he's in a very uh, he's in a disadvantage in on the, in the market right now. Seller is king. Okay, so right now it's a seller's market. It's a seller's market. Okay, because I keep hearing that buyer's market, seller's market. No, no, it's a, it's a, top, a typical, uh, it's a seller's market. Uh, for example, I, I told you about the eight days, yes. days on market. Yes. Another aspect of that is the asking, the listing price is what a, a seller will put his property on a market for. Right. He lists it for X amount, okay. say 500000 Yes. or whatever the amount. Well, in California, 63% of all properties sell for over asking price. Right. So, you know, it's, it's uh, and, and in some areas, higher than that, 70, 80%. So, uh, actually, the, the average across California is 100.2 something percent. Right. It's, it's a, um, so not only is it uh, people are paying above asking price, they won't last on the market, and you know, and, and the rates and, and the property value keep going up and up and up. Right. So it's a seller's market because if they want to sell, they can, they can sell. Right. A buyer at this point, if he's not ready to get in and know what he wants, for example, um, he, he can spend a whole lot of time looking. Right. And by the time he finds something, uh, if he's not ready to act and make an offer right there and then, that property could be gone. Yeah, if you don't react within eight if, days. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so another question. Um, what should a buyer look for? Do you have any tips for a buyer what they should look for? Um, well, I think a buyer should look for a good agent that can help them target, you know. A buyer knows what he wants, hopefully. Right. And not just a three bedroom, two baths, uh, but he wants a certain type of community right. near a certain school. Uh, it all depends, every transaction, every buyer has a different uh, criteria for what type of property they, they want and can't afford. So they, look, they should look for, uh, you know, you're going to find properties out there. If you are a handyman, for example, some people like to buy, well, you can make an offer as is kind of, of a deal where right. you, where you um, uh, but... When you when a seller lists the property, they want they want to get top dollar. Right. Uh, when a buyer get, gets into the market, they want to buy at the lowest point. Right. Uh, 
an agent can help negotiate price range. That's why the buyer should look for a good agent that can negotiate prices uh, the, uh, given the condition that the house is in, perhaps, the market that they want, and the items uh, that they're looking for. Yard, space, close uh, proximity to shopping centers, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. So when you say, um, this is a question I wanna, I wanna, I've been wanting to ask a realtor. Would, is it good to be the, um, the, the uh, how, to, how am I trying to say this? When the question of I, I was asking you about doing both, oh, dual, re, dual, re, dual representing both clients. dual agents. It's called yeah. uh, in California. It's, it's uh, dual agency. Dual agency is legal in most states except for about eight or so in in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. um, dual agency is very tricky. EXP, a company that I work with, a, a broker that I work for, uh, in California has over five thousand agents. Right. Across the world, it's over fifty thousand. Okay. Uh, and so most likely, like for example, in let's say uh, Pasadena, uh, you're gonna run into an agent that represents a buyer with EXP and, a, and another agent that represents a buyer with EXP. Right. Under, law, under the law, that's dual agency because okay. you work for the same broker. Right. Uh, so, but legally, an agent can represent both the seller and the buyer. Okay. But the tricky part of it is, is that you have to disclose to both parties, mm -hmm. and both parties have to agree. Okay. So you can't represent the, the buyer in a transaction, and then go find you a seller, I mean a, a, a seller, I mean, I'm sorry, sell, represent the buyer and then find a buyer for that top property right. without disclosing it to both parties. Right. And they both must sign off in writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the problem with that situation, and that's why some states outlaw it, because I think in Florida, uh, uh, I think I was reading somewhere that, um, or Texas, where they outlaw dual agency, they say just because you represent both parties, automatically you disqualify, you're disqualified from, uh, uh, I forget the term they use, but it's basically rep being able to uh, represent both parties completely. You're right. basically halfway. And that's, right. uh, that's, that's why it's made illegal. But an honest agent, uh, uh, somebody with integrity, somebody who knows the, what they're doing, can and sometimes it makes it easier to represent both buyers, if both parties, I mean both parties, if both uh, parties agree. Oh, okay, have you ever, have you ever I've worked with an agent that has done it. I have not done it. Okay. I don't wanna do it necessarily uh, because it puts a lot of pressure on you. Right. You have a duty to represent both parties to the fullest extent of the law and to, to the best of your ability. And so if, uh, if you're having a discussion like you and I are having now with right. the seller, you're the seller, I'm the agent, saying, okay, okay I, I put my the house on the market for 600000 but I'm willing to take 500 I can't go to the buyer and say, you know what, you offer him for 500 <laughs> Oh, okay, right. <laughs> it's illegal, unethical, and, 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 uh, and, if, and you can be sued, both the agent and the company, okay. for doing so. So I can't be, hey man, this guy, yeah, so I can't come to you, but hey, this no. guy got a property <laughs> over here, he won't buy her, we go and ask him no, for No, 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 that, that, that is illegal, unethical, and that's why uh, uh, I don't wanna, it, it's, I don't wanna go there if okay. I can help it. I mean, I would, under certain circumstances, if, uh, well, anyway, I don't wanna even go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I've always wanted to know what is escrow? And what does it cover? Escrow is um, it's an entity, it's a company that, you know, you're dealing with a lot of money and a lot of, you know, risk involved mm -hmm. when you get in, enter into a real estate transaction. Both the seller and the buyer are putting a lot on the line. Right. So uh, in a transaction between you and I, not real estate, anything else, I say, you know, I want that uh, golf bag over there. Right. I'll give you $50 for it. Oh, no problem, pay me later, okay. right? You can't do that with real estate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, escrow is, was set up to be an uh, uh, independent third party by law that controls both the money and the keys, so to speak. Okay. The seller, once he accepts the offer that the buyer makes, then he goes into escrow. Escrow okay. is a company then that follows the instructions of the purchase agreement. Within that purchase agreement, our escrow instructions. Okay. So the escrow, the buyer and the seller jointly telling escrow, this is what we want, 
this is how we're going to do it, this is how much this party is going to pay, this is what conditions are in place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So until, uh, and most, most of the time it's 30 days, 30 day escrow, typically, right. okay. in most transactions. Uh, and until all conditions are met within escrow, within the contract that both parties agree to, then the money will not transfer, nor the keys given out. Right. Unt until there's a closing date. Okay. Agreed to by both parties, right. again. At that closing date, if all conditions have not been met, then the party that has failed to meet the conditions, it's in default, basically. Okay. It's the basic default of the contract. Right. And the aggrieved party, uh, say can can send a demand letter either put up or uh, we're out of this contract and you lose your earnest money um, yeah what's earnest money when you make an offer when a buyer makes an offer because uh, sometimes for example uh, a seller will put the property on a market and you may have five offers right right okay well one one uh, one buyer says I got a thousand dollars that you can keep if I don't follow through Okay. Another buyer says, I got $5,000 that you can keep if I don't follow through. Okay. Earnest money is telling the seller, I'm serious about, about buying your house. Because okay. you could lose that money. Right. That's what earnest money is. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Don't nobody want to lose no money. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so um, how can one help escrow uh, to close faster? Uh, again, you cannot help it <laughs> oh, it's, because okay. it's a contract. Okay. You enter into it. At the beginning of the transaction, you give escrow instructions. I want 30 days escrow or 45 days escrow or 60 day escrow, and that's very unlikely and not un 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 untypical. But the only way you can do, though, is that you can go to the other party, whether you're the seller or whether you're the buyer, you go to the other party and say, Let's, everything's in place. Let's cross it, let's close escrow in 15 days instead of 30 days. Right. You could do that. But both parties have to agree. Yeah, both agree on that. Yeah. Okay, so um, I remember watching, you know, you know how they have those shows on the oh, network, yes. yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, TV yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. And um, they say, well, we can't close on here because escrow say um, the, the seller didn't get the place inspected. Okay. Okay, so right. take us through the inspection phase. Well, that's one of the contingencies that. of the contract. Okay. For example, um, you know, I, 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 I think I told you one time that I bought, I went to Las Vegas and invested in some properties over there. Okay. Um, I put in 28, no, 22 offers in two days. Okay. And four were accepted. All oh, four was accepted? <laughs> you did it against yourself. <laughs> right? But, so, the conting, one of the contingencies was that I, I will inspect the property, and if I'm not satisfied with the condition of the property, uh, that contract is void, uh, null, null and void, and I get my earnest money back. Right. So I did that with, you know, whatever, 18 properties. Okay. I backed out, not backed out. I, de I declared that the condition, w that, that the, one of the contingencies were not met as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. And so legally I was not bound to that contract. Okay. So that's the same thing with inspections. The, the lender, the third party in this transaction, if right. it's going to be financed, would be this, you know, here's your seller, the buyer, and then a third party, the lender. Okay. The lender typically requires or wants uh, uh, an inspection. Okay. Uh, uh, and they they do a so whoever pays for it, it's all in a, agreed in, in beforehand. Okay. So either the lender pays for it, the buyer pays for it, or the or the seller pays for it. That's all put into the contract. Okay. So if the lender, uh, if the uh, report has not come in, the inspection report has not come in, then whether it's on the seller or the, or the lender, the lender says, no, I haven't seen a report, I can't approve it. Well, you can't close escrow. The conditions have not been met. Right. And that's why sometimes in that case, you would ask an addenda, you put an addenda to the contract and say, wait, well, I need another week. And if both parties agree, you can add another week to escrow. Okay. However, that's where the cash money comes in, right? That's why lend, uh, buyers... I mean, the sellers, excuse me, uh, typically would like to deal with cash buyers because none of that comes into the picture. The third party won't come into the picture. Oh, okay. So if you had a property that you were selling and I saw it, I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll purchase your property for this much cash money, and then we, you sign off, I sign off, and it's mine, and that's it. 
We don't have to go to no escrow, no lender. No, no, no. no. You, still, you, still, you still have to go through escrow. Okay. Every, every trans, real estate transaction has to go through escrow. Oh, okay. In California, I most, in every, some states have attorneys that deal, that do the closing. Mm -hmm. uh, but in California, it's escrow. Oh, okay. uh, there's a title company involved, for example, whether that the lender wants to uh, get a report, do the inspection. Title insurance is always typically part of any transaction because you don't want a lien on that property that you find out about it after you pay for it. And that means that the title is not clear. Somebody else that has not come forward may have an interest in that property, and you don't find out about it because you didn't do a title search. Okay, but doesn't, have to, doesn't that have to come out if the person, like you said, it's all, it's all about honesty? It's all about honesty. The seller, in fact, may not even know. Be aware that there's a default, there's something happened. Say uh, you did a project 10 years ago, okay. and you didn't pay the contractor for something. Okay. Or the contractor filed, put a lien on that property and filed it with the county um, uh, re records. And the, either the or seller, they, you know, ch changed hands. I mean, they, the per person died, someone else took over the property. It, anything, any number of things can happen where liens can be on the property without the owner being aware of it. And so the buyer comes in, or perhaps even years before that, that has come up. The buyer gets the property without doing a title search, and down the line somebody finds out through whatever, however, whatever process that they have an interest in that property. Mm -hmm. Well, now the new buyer has to pay off that amount. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. Or lose the property. Or lose the property, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was told that because um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, 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 would never buy into a community where it's a HO, HOA. HOA, HOA, yeah, yeah. HOA. So how do you feel about HOAs for well, against? Well, uh, properties that I have in in, uh, in in Nevada, Las Vegas, have all of them have uh, HOA fees. Okay. Um, again, when you buy, when you purchase the property, that's obviously you have to be aware. Of if there's any HOA fees. Some are higher than others. Some are out, you know, half the, the amount of the, of the mortgage potentially. Right. Some of them are very min, uh, minimal and take care of the common areas. Part of that, part of the, there's a, there's a, there's a um, report that you have to get from the, the uh, board, whoever owns the, con the uh, controls the uh, um, community. Uh, close co gated community in, in some cases, condos in other cases, right. uh, that have HOAs. Uh, and it's spelled out what the fees are for and how mm -hmm. much and <coughs> et cetera, et cetera. There, you know, there could be um, uh, higher than you would want, but in some cases you may want them because they take care, they maintain the property, the value stays at a certain, you don't have to worry about Right. Ma maintaining the property necessarily because you're paying someone else to do it. Okay. That's like property management. Right. Okay. So in some ways, that's, you, can, you can consider it property management. Oh, okay. So now is it true that if you fall behind in your HOA fees, mm -hmm. they could take your home? Is that? Oh, oh yeah. It's a lien. They it's put a, a lien. lien on your home. It's a, li okay. it's a lien against the property. Okay. Yes. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, Tax liens, HOA back uh, fees. Uh, wh when you when you try to trans when you try to sell the property, when you try to transfer the property, uh, escrow, title companies will look at a report. Oh, he hasn't paid his HOA fees in three years, four years. Well, this cannot go through. The buyer is not going to assume that liability. Right. So you have to pay it off. If you don't pay it off, that buyer can say, okay, adios. And you still liable for for the for the um, for the HOA fees. You have to pay it off. You got to pay those off. And if the HOA de determines that you know you're way out of line with that, they can file uh, co for collections. And if you don't pay that, you could lose your property. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got to make sure you pay your stuff. You, you have to. Yeah. That's that's a uh, when you end, that's why when you buy a property with HOA. That's something that you have to understand. Uh, as an agent, I have to make that my clients aware of what they're entering into. Okay. The contract is, is what binds 
both parties or all parties okay. to that transaction. You have to read the contract. We have to be aware of the contract. And you have to be, um, uh, you cannot say that, oh, I wasn't aware of this. Yeah. Is that your signal? <laughs> 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 that's it. Exactly. Yeah, no, know. no. It, so it's, it's, uh, that's why, you know, um, buying and selling a house may seem easy to some, but there's a lot of underlying things that, that I'm really learning. Know. I've Just as since I got licensed, I, I spent 15, 20 hours a week studying because there's so much to learn. I obviously don't know everything. I'm working with uh, some colleagues that have been in the business for 30, 40 years. So I'm learning from them. They guide me through transactions as mentors. So that's why I'm confident that I can take somebody by the hand through the process because I've, I've, I've been taught by some, some profe yes. good professionals. All right. Well, <laughs> in that case, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they just gave me the five-minute uh, wrap-up sign. Sure. So what I would like for you to do is uh, give all your platforms and um, how people can reach you if they are interested in uh, buying or selling or just sure. uh, if they want to just, you know, talk to you about uh, whatever. Yeah, so. actually, um, we have a, a website that uh, would be the best way to contact me. Okay, so uh, out of, out of this camera right here? Automatically, yeah. anybody gets into my, goes to my website, I get a phone call. Okay. So if you're on a website... I know somebody's interested, okay. so I can call you back. Okay. And that website is Juan Murillo, which is my legal name, Juan Murillo, J-U-A-N-M-U-R-I-L-L-O, dot E-X-P Realty dot com. That's okay. the website. Okay. Uh, my phone number, the business is 626-691-HOME, H-O-M-E, right. or 4663. <laughs> <laughs> And my uh, email is juan.murillo at exp, exprealty.com. All right. All right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for having me. Hey, not a problem. Always. Uh, right. There you have it. Uh, you have his information. And if, uh, hey, you looking for something, talk Give to me him. a call. Give him a call. Be ready uh, to help. All right. Uh, John, I want to thank <laughs> you <laughs> for coming on the show. And... Um, Millie, let's see if we can get a lot of people uh, your sure. way. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. This is pretty educational. I got something out of it. I'm pretty sure. I hope some of the viewers got something out of it. But always remember, don't ever share your 8x10 dream with somebody with a 5x7 mind. My name is Raheem Mitchell. God bless. I'll see you next week. Peace. Let's talk about it, talk about it. Let's talk about it, talk about it. Talk about it. Let's talk about it, talk about it. Talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it.